Hi, I'm Donna Tenor. I'm a Crawford County, Wisconsin Master Gardener Volunteer. We are partnering with the Prairie du Chien, Wisconsin Park and Rec Department to bring you this video. Today, I will be talking about making seed tapes and seed mats. So how is this different or maybe better than just going out to the garden and dropping the seeds in the ground? Why take the time to do this extra step? The advantage is you don't have to deal with the elements, especially if you want to conserve your seeds. You control the exact amount of spacing of your seeds now, and you can figure out if you need extra seeds. Since tiny seeds barely need to be covered, the paper makes it easier to see how much soil you're really putting on. How many times have you sowed a handful of tiny, tiny seeds like carrots or lettuce, for instance, or even worse, those little specks of basil or oregano, and wished you had a magnifying glass, or sowed a row of tiny seeds only to end up thinning out half or more of them. It's not just a matter of going cross-eyed at seed sowing times. Sometimes the weather doesn't cooperate. And the wind decides to pick up just as you decide to put down that little pinch of seed. Sometimes all you want is just a couple of seeds. And as you shake out the packet, a whole year's supply pours out into your hands. So what is a seed tape? A seed tape is basically a strip of paper with seeds embedded into it for precision planting. It is sold in many nurseries and garden centers but you're not likely to find the seed tape in the variety that you want. It's also expensive for what you actually are buying. You can make your own seed tapes and mats at home with just some school glue, some seeds, toilet paper or napkins, and a grid with your spacing on it so you know how, how to space your seeds. You can make several varieties of seed tapes to sow throughout the year and it's quick and easy. It's also a good winter or rainy day project when you can't get outside to work. And it is a great way to get the kids involved with gardening. When the sun does come out, you'll be ready to go. Some vegetables do tolerate cool weather better than others and can be planted much earlier. Things like lettuce, radish, spinach, kale, beets, Carrots, onions, and parsnips are examples of cool weather vegetables. Some vegetables like lettuce, spinach, and radishes, when the weather does warm up, they will bolt. And bolting means that they send up a seed head and become bitter and are not as good to use. So why, were, why are we making seed tapes using only cer certain seeds? As you can see here with this little graphic that I made, beans and peas and some beet seeds are actually quite large and can be handled easily one seed at a time. But when you start going down the list, radishes are smaller, carrots, lettuce are smaller, basil is smaller, and oregano is hardly the size of a fly speck. So when you're trying to sow those seeds outside directly in the ground, it makes it a lot more difficult. So let's get to the fun and actually make a seed tape. Today we're going to make a seed tape with radish seeds. And I start by putting a few seeds in a small container so that I can easily pick them up. And it doesn't take as many as you think it's going to because we're all used to going outside with that packet of seeds and coming back in with the empty packet and having so many seeds that we have to throw away half of them. First of all, I take my paper napkin and I, I like to use a single ply inexpensive dinner napkin and the grid that I have made and my grid is on a one by one inch grid. And I laminated mine so I could use it year after year. You don't have to laminate it, but if you don't, cover it with a piece of plastic wrap so that the glue doesn't soak through your napkin or your toilet paper and stick to your grid. Now, the pretty simple um, 
supplies. I have my seeds. I have a toothpick that I'm going to use to pick up my seeds and a bottle of school glue. And I use either Elmer's clear or white school glue. It doesn't matter as long as it's a water soluble school glue. And you just put a tiny little spot of glue on your mat. And now the radishes need to be spaced at about two inches. So I can see my grid right through this napkin. I don't know if you're able to see that on the video or not, but I can see my grid through the napkin. So I put down one roll of, of dots of glue and I tip my, my uh, toothpick in one of the spots of glue and I use that spot of glue then as my adhesive to pick up my un radish seeds. And as you can see, I can easily just tip uh, a radish seed, just touch it and pick it up and be able to put it right on my grid. See, I'm just picking up one seed at a time and placing it on the dot of glue. Now I've got my first row done. So we're going to do one more or two more rows so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Now I'm going over two more inches this way so that I can put down my glue. And again, I am able to easily see this grid through my napkin. And so I put down another row and I don't usually go over two rows wide. And the reason that I don't is because um, I end up putting my hand in the glue and making a bigger mess than anything else. So again, I tip my, my toothpick in the glue and go back to where I left off and start setting the seeds in the glue. Now the, the school glue will dissolve when you get outside, so you don't have any worries about that. As soon as it's exposed to the weather and the elements, the napkin or the toilet paper and the school glue will break down. The seed will be allowed to germinate and grow without any problems at all. I have a tendency when I'm doing this to pick up the larger seeds. Somewhere along the line, I've got it in, um, embedded in my brain that the bigger seeds are going to make the bigger vegetables. So I will pick up the larger seeds and put them out on the mat and I'll leave those smaller seeds. Sometimes I don't even plant them. Now this mat is about half completed. So I'm going to right now for to be able to show you what I do for the rest of it, I'm going to slide this mat onto a piece of wax paper. And I use wax paper to protect, to keep my uh, glue from sticking to the furniture and things that I don't want it to stick to. I put a second napkin or piece of paper towel down. Oh, and I forgot one very important step. I need to label this so when I get outside, I know what it is that I have. So these are radishes. I just labeled it in the corner that they're radishes. Now I'll pick my seed mat up and lay it right face down on the new napkin. And then I'm going to label the top corner again so I know what it is when I get outside. You don't want to be guessing when you're outside. Uh, and if you, if you plant several different varieties of a vegetable, you can also put down like this is a, a white tip sparkler radish. You can label that on there. I usually just label them radishes. Now I'm going to set this one aside so it can dry so we can make a couple um, more. When using toilet paper, um, I will use one step I always do between the mats is take a damp piece of of uh, paper towel and wipe the excess glue off of my laminated grid. Otherwise, what I put down next may stick to that. So when I use toilet paper, I usually use uh, single ply toilet paper or I will 
if I have double ply, I will split it. I don't like to use anything over three or four foot in length. Four foot is the width of my raised bed, so if I'm planting in rows in a raised bed situation, I don't want those to be seven or eight foot long. A longer piece is a lot harder to control and to deal with when you're outside in the in the wind, so I use a shorter piece. Now, and on toilet paper, I like to make two, two rows, so I will put my two rows of glue dots down. Again, I'm using a two inch grid to, to do this, and I will put my two rows of glue dots down. I use my toothpick as my tool to pick up my seeds, tipping it in the glue, and I pick up my seeds one at a time. Oh, that time I got two. So now I need to separate those so I only have one seed in a spot. Sometimes your toothpick gets a little too much glue on it and you may pick up two seeds, especially if they're little seeds. Um, I find that I pick up two seeds lots of times doing lettuce or carrots. The seeds are long and narrow and smaller and a lot harder to handle. So now I'm going to put this piece of toilet paper back over the top and I'm going to just lightly touch it down in a couple of spots. Then I'm going to label it so again I know what I have when I get outside to plant in my garden. Now I'm going to take this and put it on a piece of wax paper so that it doesn't stick as it's drying, so it doesn't stick to the surface, to the furniture surface. Now you can see this one I used a double roll. You can use a single roll if you're going to make um, a long roll and you're planting something that you want in a single roll. These are carrot seeds. I put spaced them at my two inch intervals and I did these in a single roll. The carrots are gonna be in the ground much longer than radishes and they're gonna take up a little bit more space to grow. So I usually plant those, um, I like to plant those so that I have a good three inch spacing with my carrots. And here's a double row mat with carrot seeds on a three inch spacing. I have three inches from here to here and three inches from here to here. You can plant them with three inches from this one to this one and do a W pattern, but I usually do just a double row pattern. All right, so now we've moved outside and we're gonna have to deal with a little bit of truck traffic and um, vehicle traffic because I live close to the street. We are going to actually plant a few things today. And some of the things that I'm going to plant are, one of the things I'm going to plant is peas. And these, you check the back of your package and you find out the spacing for your peas. And we're going to plant these about five inches apart. And you just, peas are pretty good sized seeds, so they're easy to pick up and plant one at a time. And in a container like this, I don't normally make rows or use a, a trowel to make a hole. My potting soil is new, so I just use my finger. I make my hole and I drop my seed in. Needs to go in about one inch deep. So I'm just kind of pressing it down so that it's about one inch into the soil. Peas again are very, very cold and cool tolerant. They will they will do much better in the cool weather than they will in the warm weather. This is one of the vegetables that when it gets warm, they just kind of fizzle out on you. So no, that was a, just a window box, but peas, you can plant a row of peas in pretty, pretty short amount of time because they space a, a little further apart and they're a bigger, easier seed to handle. The next step of each container will be to label them. And I just use a homemade label that says peas. 
on that. It's, it's not going to be anything permanent, so I don't need to make it anything more permanent. So now we're going to use some of the seed mats that we made earlier, and we've um, learned how to do that. This one is a radish seed mat. You can see the seeds, and you can see that the wind is helping us a little bit here today. And this is the reason, one of the reasons that a seed mat is so helpful. You can see the seeds on the mat. I'm going to take a little bit of soil and sprinkle over them. Radishes need to be about a quarter to a half inch under the soil. So I sprinkle a little bit of soil over the top of my seed mat. And then I'm going to label it. So my, my seeds are planted. The wind has helped me as much as it can, but I've gathered my, kept my seeds um, close by by not allowing the wind to take them away. This one is a lettuce seed mat. You can see lettuce seeds are much smaller seeds. They're a little bit harder to see on the mat than the radish seeds were, but I've got them spaced out. Again, I'm going to put them in the center of my pot. And I just put my hand on it to kind of keep it where I want it to stay because the wind will blow the mat away as well as the seeds if you're not holding on to it. Lettuce doesn't want to be buried as deep as the radishes. So there's my pot of lettuce that's planted. And now let's see. This one is um, spinach. So we're going to put the spinach mat down. And spinach, again, is a larger seed. And you see, that? that's a much larger seed. But this is one that really likes the cool weather as well. Does not do well in warm weather. Um, the rule usually is the larger the seed, the you plant it a little deeper. So this one gets a little bit more soil, just like the um, radish seeds would. So now in just a few seconds, we have planted a container of peas, a container of lettuce, spinach, and radishes. Now we're going to move over to the raised bed, and I will show you how I plant my uh, seeds in that space. All right, now, so we're gonna plant lettuce in this raised bed, and I brought out two different types of lettuce, and as you can see, the wind is blowing a little bit today. Now, if I were trying to space these little tiny seeds at one inch grids, you can imagine how difficult that would be. So what I have done, my bed is all prepared and I'm gonna use my knee to weight that one down. And I'm just going to sprinkle some soil over the top of this mat, adjust it a little bit as we go. And again, I've got my bed already prepared. So now this is a, a leaf lettuce on this first mat, and that's why the seeds were much closer together. This is um, a romaine style lettuce, and it wants to be planted a little bit further apart. So I don't know if you can see those seeds. They're small white seeds, and they need to be planted on about a two inch grid. So, I'm going to plant, put a little bit of potting or potting soil. I use potting soil in my raised bed. So I'm going to put soil over the top of this um, mat as well. And you, you can see where your glue spot is on this seed mat. So if you don't have, when you look back, if you don't have soil on top of your glue spot, you're going to want to... Uh, make sure that you do have just a little bit of soil. Now I'm marking them, and I like to just lightly press these down in this bed, not so much in a flower pot, but in this, in this bed I press them down a little bit so that they stay, and I'm making good seed to soil contact so that when, uh, when they're ready to sprout and grow, that they've got the soil there to to help them with the moisture and to allow their roots to get anchored in. That's basically how you plant a seed mat. You can see that 
you see parts of the mat still sticking out so you know where your boundaries are when you come to plant your next now if I were planting carrots or beets in this space I would see exactly where my boundaries are even after a, a light rainstorm you can still see the edge of that if you're concerned that you won't be able to see that you can just mark it with a stake on each side so that you have your row across so that you can mark to know where your where your seed mat is and in the space of 15 minutes I can plant a half a dozen containers and this raised bed and be back in the house or off to do another project in my garden. The fact sheet that I have found for you to use today to use for a tutorial on making seed tapes and seed mats is from Florida State University and the it is called IFAS Gardening Solutions from Florida State University. You will find that they used a flour and water glue. I have tried that and I still go back to using the Elmer's or the inexpensive school glue. I would like to thank you for watching this video and I hope you've enjoyed it and Hopefully it was helpful, and if you have any questions, please contact me through the University um, of Wisconsin Master Gardening, Crawford County, Wisconsin, at 326-0223, uh, and reference Garden Video Talks by Donna Tinor.